After several dis After several dis After several dis Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay. Today I'm here with my May wrap up for 2022. I read a total of 12 books this month, which I am honestly surprised at. So I will be splitting this up into two parts. This is the first six books that I read for this month. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have is Burn Down, Rise Up by Vincent Tirado, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. After several disappearances in the Bronx, 16 year old Raquel can no longer ignore what is happening when her crush's cousin ends up going missing. Her mother suddenly falls ill and there seems to be a mysterious link that connects to these disappearances. Charlize and Raquel must work together to beat the disturbing urban legend called the Echo Game and it's like the story of that. This was a pretty interesting concept that I was definitely intrigued to know more about when I read the synopsis. I listened to this on audiobook and I think that the narrator did do a very good job in giving the overall vibe and atmosphere of the story a very creepy aesthetic. I do think that the world building and the pacing was a little lackluster at times but I do think that as you read on you get more invested in the characters and the overall story. I wasn't the biggest fan of Raquel, which made it very difficult to root for her. I just found her to be very selfish and self-centered, and I just didn't like the way that she treated people, especially her best friend. It just rubbed me the wrong way. I liked the friendship aspect of this book a lot more than the romance plot. I liked how the romance took more of a back seat. I also liked how this had some historical fiction and supernatural elements thrown in. I was expecting a strict horror book, and I got so much more than that, so I definitely enjoyed that part, but I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next I picked up Tokyo Dreaming. This is by Amiko Jean, and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars as well. This is the sequel to Tokyo Ever After, which I adored, so I was a little let down by this, I'm not gonna lie. It just didn't give me the same vibes that I got with the first book, and I loved Akio and Izumi together so much, and the fact that one of the characters was not a prominent part of this book was really, really disappointing. I did really like Izumi's character development though, and I was a fan of the fake dating trope in this, so I mean, I'm not particularly mad about it. I was just left wanting more. This is another one that I listened to on audiobook and I think that the narrator did an amazing job just like they did in the first book so I can't complain too too much. I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is The Lost Dreamer by Liz Hureta and I gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Indir who is a dreamer. She lives in the temple and she has the ability to dream the truth. She is asked by the dying king to dream for him one last time, but she must keep what she sees a secret. And so when she goes into the king's dreams, she returns and she discovers that she has lost her ability to dream altogether. When the king's son Alkin returns from his long journey, he is threatening the dreamers with ridding the society of them altogether. So Indir must leave their small village in order to find the lost dreamer. And then we are also following Seiya, who is a seer. She is being controlled and manipulated by her mother, Sile. They travel village to village, never staying too long because Sile is pretending that Seiya's gift is her own and profiting off of it. Seiya has always worn a necklace around her neck and been told that it is to protect her, but one day this necklace is stolen and Seiya's true potential and gifts come to light, and it's the story of those two. I thought that this concept sounded so stinking cool, but I was honestly just so bored throughout the majority of this story, which was very disappointing. I just found the pacing to be so slow. I also just think that there was a lot of context missing from the book at the beginning, which made sense in the end with all the reveals that came to light, but while reading, it was very frustrating. I did enjoy the two main characters. I think that both of their stories were very interesting. I definitely think that I liked Saya's story better and learning more about her and her backstory. I loved how strong she came out in the end, but I will say that at times, I was a bit confused about who was who because there were just so many side characters being introduced to both girls' storylines. I just couldn't keep them all straight because there were just so many of them. I also was not the biggest fan 
of the romance. I understand why it was necessary for the plot, but just was not vibing with it. So overall, I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up, I have Pay Dirt Road by Samantha Jane Allen. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars as well. Clearly, this month was not a good reading month. So this follows Annie, who after graduating, she returns to her little small town in Texas because she's not 100% sure what she wants to do with her life. She finds herself brought in to her grandfather Leroy's private investigating business. When a local waitress goes missing and a hit and run occurs, Leroy and Annie start an investigation to try to see if these two deaths are linked, but then things start to hit a little bit too close to home for Annie and it's the story of that. This was another very slow read. I just never felt like I really got into the story or became invested in any of these characters. I do think that it would make a pretty great Lifetime movie though. It just gives off those vibes. I have to say that I was not a fan of Annie. I think that she was just very boring and uninteresting. I did not care about a single thing that happened to her, which makes it very hard to want to read an entire story about this one character. This is another one I listened to an audiobook. I do think that the narrator did a great job with these characters and their voices, but I just found the overall story to just be very lackluster and a very average read in my opinion, so three out of five stars. The next book that I have is Of Curses and Kisses by Senya Menon, and I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling that follows Princess Jaya Rao, who loves nothing more than her family. When Rumors that it was the Emerson royal family who began slandering her younger sister in the media, Jaya will stop at nothing to exact her revenge. So when the opportunity to attend the same elite boarding school as Grey Emerson emerges, she decides that she is going to stir up some trouble. Jaya decides that she is going to make Grey fall in love with her and then break his heart, but little does she know that Grey Emerson was cursed by the Roe matriarch to die on his 18th birthday. He has spent his entire life hidden away from his family and pushing his friends away, but is Jaya the key to his happily ever after? You'll have to read the book to find out. As we all know, I am a big fan of fairy tale retellings. I really liked the rose pendant in this and the twist on the whole petals falling off situation of the original story. I really liked the setting of the elite boarding school. I'm always a fan of boarding school stories, so you know I was here for this one. I also really enjoyed Grey's character. I just thought he was such a little sweet cinnamon roll and it just made me so sad about how moody he was and how he tried so hard to push everybody away. You just wanted to give him a big bear hug. I enjoyed watching Jaya and Grey grow closer together as the story progressed, and I really like learning more about their two feuding families. I think that Grey's character development made a lot more sense than Jaya's. I think that hers was just so quick in a very short period of time. It just didn't really make sense to me and didn't really feel genuine. But overall, I do think that it was a cute take on a classic tale, so I gave 3.5 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I will be talking about for this part of the wrap-up is Servant's Mage. This is by Kate Elliott and I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. So this follows Felion, who is a lamplighter. She is pulled into a political conspiracy by a group of rebels against her will. With four other mages, Felion travels to an abandoned mine where people are trapped inside and it's basically them trying to save these people with a couple detours on the way. I was not the biggest fan of this. I did give it a 3 out of 5 stars because I do think that the concept was very intriguing and I get what the author was trying to do, but I think it was just too complicated to try to shove into an 170 page novella. There's just way too much that needed to be built upon to make any sense of this world. I was definitely intrigued in the beginning, but then I think that it became far too info dumpy for my liking and I just stopped caring because it just felt like too much being thrown at me at once. I 
personally just think that it would have been better as a full, fully fleshed out novel, so I did give it a 3 out of 5 stars because, like I said, I did like what the author was trying to do, just far too short for what it was. Alright everybody, so those are the first six books that I read for the month of May. If you are interested in the other six books that I read, then I will leave part two down below. Once it is uploaded, you can check out that video to see the other books that I read this month. Let me know down below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!